Hello everyone, uh, my name is Jack Hudson, and today we will be completing my best movies of 2022 list. Um, I've watched, I think, over 100 movies this year. Um, and yeah, so uh, I've changed the categories a little bit. Um, so uh, I guess starting from the top, not for me. It's just these movies just aren't for me, so it's not really fair for me to criticize uh, these movies. But, um, you know. That's, that's just a category for that. Trash means it's actually really bad and I don't like it. Uh, below average is just below the standard. Uh, just kind of not great. I would call it trash, but it's not great. Uh, decent is just just a decent. Whatever, take it or leave it. Good is like, it's a good movie and uh, you should see it. Great means this is great. Um, you know, step above... Uh, what everyone else is doing, and then must watch is like you must watch these movies. Like, do yourself a favor before you die and watch these movies. Then God tier are uh, I'm only going to reserve five spots for, and those will be reserved for my top five favorite films of the year. So I'll do that at the very very end. Um, time stamps down below uh, to skip to that if you just want to see the top five. But without further ado, uh, let's get started. Uh, this is Home Alone. One, uh, it's good. Yeah, 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 I like it more than that. Yeah. Uh, Home Alone, it's a classic Christmas movie. It's one of the, uh, few Christmas movies I actually really enjoy watching. Uh, you know, most Christmas movies aren't exactly great movies. They're just good holiday movies. But you could make your argument that Home Alone is a, uh, good movie also being a good Christmas movie. Um. Whereas a lot of Christmas movies, that's not really the case. Uh, but yeah, so that, that's Home Alone for me, an absolute classic. Uh, then we have Kick-Ass. Um, I loved this in high school. Dude, I was in love with Kick-Ass. I, I bought the comic books based on the books. That's the first graphic novel I ever purchased with my own money was Kick-Ass. Um, and the movie's just really... It, it still holds up with the humor and stuff like that. Um you know, dated references here and there, uh, but it's still a good kind of spoof on the superhero genre. This was like the boys before the boys, you know, just kind of making fun, but making more fun of the comic book side of things, whereas the boys is making fun of, like, the movie industry, uh, superhero kind of things, but yeah, no, Kick-Ass is a lot of fun. It's still, uh, I think it's honestly great. Whoa, where are you going? I think it's great. Uh... No, wait, what am I doing? There, yep, that's good. Uh, I think that's solid. Uh, oh, I wanted to put some of these in the not for me section. Uh, yeah, that was more of a joke. Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. Groovy. Alright, uh, and then we have Avatar 2, Way of Water. Um, this is, everyone should go see this, and I shouldn't have to say that because it's already made, like, a billion dollars. Um, I don't know if this movie will necessarily be, like, a cultural impact like the first one was, but it was still an excellent, excellent movie. Uh, the visual effects are absolutely outstanding. Um, it's almost like if you give your, uh, VFX artist time... Um, and not having to crunch everything all at once, <coughs> just the <coughs> Marvel, um, then you actually get really great visual effects. Uh, I mean, I haven't seen a movie this pretty since, well, the last Avatar movie. Um, so at the very least, if you're not into the story and stuff like that, you'll, there's definitely, you cannot, like, not be in awe of the visual effects, because, like, water has never looked this fucking good in a movie before. Uh, CGI water, that is, but... Yeah, no, Way of Water was one of my favorite watches of this year. Uh, I would put it, like, right below the Batman. Uh, Blunt, this is gonna go with the... Tr uh, yeah, trash. Uh, okay, well, then I want to move... I want to move some of these, then. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, that seems right. 
I feel like I wasted my time with this movie. I mean, the one thing you can say about it is it's got great cinematography and stuff like that. But it just, it does kind of spit on the name of Marilyn Monroe. Like, her whole life wasn't just a misery fest, you know, looking into it and stuff like that um, after the movie. You know, she had, you know, a, a life <laughs> and stuff. But this movie seems to really enjoy, like, taking the piss out of her. Um, sorry, let me just chase this real quick. Because uh, the colors are repetitive. Uh, what do I want? I guess a dark green? No. Oh, blue. There we go. Yeah, that's what I want. Get out of here. All right. Um, yeah, no. It, it's just a misery fest, and it just—it kind of sucks. <laughs> it's just—it's just not good. Um, you know, watch at your own risks. I just think it was trying to be edgy, just to be edgy. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know. Watch, watch it. I guess if you if you're really curious, watch it. But if you you're like, ah, oh, I don't know, then don't watch it. <laughs> uh, then we have Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. This is an absolutely must watch. Uh, this is one of the best stop motion films to come out this year. Uh, to come out in a while uh the story is great the designs are great um the characters of pinocchio stuff is like such a like it feels like a grim's fairy tale of pinocchio um where it's not afraid to get really dark at certain points and stuff like that um but yeah no it's just a fantastic fantastic film and everyone has a netflix account so you have no excuse check out pinocchio absolutely gilmo totoro is the master of um creature design and storytelling um and i don't know how i it seems like he was really involved in this like um into the production of this and stuff and it's the best pinocchio movie to come out of this year where we had like four pinocchio movies um i've only seen two and two of which which we'll get to that but yeah no pinocchio by Guillermo del toro is absolutely excellent a stop motion masterpiece all right uh then we got the Lindsay Lohan Christmas thing, Falling for Christmas, yeah, it's just not for me. Home Alone 2, a step down for sure from Home Alone 1. Still quite good. Um, it's just treading a lot of the same tracks, you know? It's like uh, they kind of write themselves into a corner being like, oh, he got lost again when like... And the parents still treat him crappily in this second movie like they left him home alone with a bunch of burglars and then like he's just like oh yeah it is what it is like if that was my kid i would be like i i'm so sorry i i would pay for all the therapy and stuff like that because like god damn the humor's good though uh although it, it's just kind of just it just recycles jokes so it's nothing truly original um yeah when you look at a sequel you look like at Alien and Aliens. Alien is a horror movie. Aliens is an action movie. Aliens, it, you know, took the original source material of Alien and elevated it. Um, now, I still like the original Alien more, but um, I wouldn't, like, freak out if anyone said, oh, Aliens is my preferred Alien film. Like, you know, they're both great. Uh, Wendell, Wendell and Grendel, I believe. Uh, this kind of disappointed me, honestly. Um... The plot is just really unfocused, and then toward the end, it's this, like, really f out of nowhere, like, uh, st like, statement or whatever about the world, and it's just, like, uh, the main character seems pretty unlikable and stuff like that. It's it just, it, it, like, the plot just wandered around. It, it wasn't focused in the slightest. Um, some of the stop-motion techniques are very good, but in comparison with Pinocchio, it's, it's not even... Um, it's not even, you know, I would say definitely better than the house. Definitely better than that. All right. I would put it on top of decent, but I am severely disappointed, uh, in this movie. It doesn't really do anything unique, unfortunately. Um, even though key or, um, um, <sighs> yeah, no, it's just, it's not great. All right, then we have the first Knives Out. I actually watched Glass Onion first, then Knives Out. Um, so Knives Out is pretty much the last movie I saw this year. Um, and I gotta say, it is quite good. I would put it 
a top of good. Uh, it scratches the surface of great, but doesn't quite get there. Um, you know, we're going to move this down, actually. We're going to move it, like, right there. Yeah. I feel like that's fair. Um, <laughs> just looking over that. Yeah. Now, Nice Out is, is a very, very good film. Uh, I, I like it because, like, with a lot of mainstream movies now, it's just Marvel, 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 and stuff like that. And, like, we finally have, like, a mystery movie kind of thing. A mystery movie franchise that could just go on for however long it wants to. Um and like you know that's something unique with today's movie industry and stuff like that because it's mostly just based on a book based on this based on that whereas like this is an original concept and stuff like that so uh i want to promote that and the first knives out is very good um yeah and then we have the irishman oh i, I i'm a mario scorsese simp uh the irishman is one of his best it's definitely long but it's totally worth it um, and of course the actors are aged quite a bit. So some scenes, uh, like <laughs> Robert De Niro kicking that guy at a grocery store was just not, uh, very convincing at all. But with all that being said, it's a must watch at some point. I mean, the acting is fantastic. De Niro's at his best. Pacino's at his best. Um, just the Irishman is just a fantastic fucking movie and, um, uh, everyone should see it. <laughs> Then we have when Harry Met Sally, and this is like an exceptional film for me because, like, normally I hate like romance movies, rom com movies, and when Harry Met Sally is like, it's still unique uh, over all other like competitors and stuff like that in the um, romance movie genre. And it's actually interesting; it keeps you engaged and it keeps you guessing will they or won't they make it. Um, it's just, and it's a very well done film. Very. Slow place takes its time, but you care about the characters and you want them to end up together. Um, it's just one of the greatest romance movies of all time, honestly. Uh, I would put it at great. Uh, yeah, no, I, this movie honestly really shocked me. Yeah, no, it's a it's a great, great, great feature. Um, yeah, and then we have. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, I'm getting water. Uh, then we have X, um, which is technically the sequel to Pearl, although Pearl came out first, which we'll get to Pearl later on. Um, but X was a really fun movie. Um, I would put it like... Yeah. It, it's a... Is it though? Is it that great? I think it's, I think it's this great. <laughs> it is a great movie though. It's a, uh, it's a horror film centered around like kind of the porn industry and stuff like that. Um, and like even, even comments on like ageism and stuff like that, which is really interesting. Um, this director, uh, his name escapes me now, but like he, he's great at these movies. Um, I, you know, and you see some of the same talent and, the talent is great. The main uh, lead is the girl is fantastic, which is she's the main lead in Pearl as well. Um, and she plays the old lady at this one, too. Like the prosthetics are just fucking incredible. Um, but yeah, no, X is a really fun and enjoyable. Or if you like that kind of like grindhouse, like horror movie stuff and you want to throw back to that, but the, something that's a little bit more modern, X is for you. Uh, then we have Skyfall um, with Daniel Craig. Uh, Skyfall is uh, a very, very good James Bond movie. Uh, I'm a huge James Bond fan. Um, I would put it like... Yeah. Yeah, that seems right. Uh, Skyfall is a great James Bond movie. Uh, you know... It, it's about taking away everything that James Bond knows and flipping it over its head uh, with, I believe this one has Javier Bardem as the main villain, and he just kills it in this. He's so threatening and menacing. Um, and, you know, a Bond movie's only as good as his villain, and this has one of the best Bond villains in the whole franchise. Um, the action's great. Um, you know, it keeps you on the edge of your seat with the action and stuff, and, yeah, no, it's... It's a fantastic Bond movie and a fantastic movie in general. 
Barbarian was very good. Um, going into it not knowing much about it was definitely the way to go. And the marketing did a really good job of that. Uh, oh, sorry. The marketing did a really good job of that. Surprisingly enough, most horror movies like to like spoil all the scares and stuff like that. But like Barbarian very kept it underneath the rug and stuff. Um, although I didn't find it particularly scary. Um, you know, it was just an entertaining roller coaster ride of a horror movie. I'll give it that. And definitely surprising. And the social commentary is actually subtle at points and obvious at others, but like still enjoyable. You know what I mean? Um, but, but some of it is very underneath the surface. Um, overall, it's just really enjoyable and, um, great directing. I think one of the kids from, uh, the white kids, you know, that sketch show, um, uh, this is, I believe, his first or second motion picture that he's ever put out. And it's it's honestly very, very good. Uh, Justin Long is in this, and he plays a hilarious character. Um, but yeah, no. Um, Barbarian, go into it knowing nothing and judge for it yourself. Uh, Disenchanted, not for me. Uh, watched it with the girlfriend. Um, she seemed to like it, so yeah. The very first Avatar. Now, a lot of people shit on the original Avatar because they, they say this like oh can you even tell me the uh character's name in it no like because i watched it back when i was a kid in 2010 and haven't watched it since like <laughs> like okay and, and avatar let's let's not mince words here avatar is mostly for the visual experience uh if visual storytelling and what cgi can do that's really what you're kind of there for the movie about and the plot is, you know, generic on a surface level, but, like, the world and, like, the world building, like, uh, people take for granted world building in movies because of the Marvel movies. Because the Marvel movies, you have to watch all the films, and then, like, that's where you get your world building from, is that. But now that Marvel has already established itself, it doesn't need to fucking um, world build at all. It's just like, you know this shit, here you go. And it's, like, really lazy um, when it comes to that. Um, I only bring that up because those are the most popular movies as of right now. You know, Avatar came out where time before the Marvel craze and stuff like that. Um, and the world building is fantastic. It actually cares about building up the world of Pandora and stuff like that. Um, and you are invested in some of the characters. You may not remember their names, but it's like a Rogue One type situation. Um, however, there are glaring issues with avatar so i can't in good conscience put it in great there's actually quite a bit of problems in it but um it is still a good solid movie um a lot of people want to shit on it for some fucking reason i don't know why especially for the sequel people want to shit on it because james cameron but like they'll be like oh yes yes dr strange yes and it's like uh, that shit's like Multiverse of Madness, like, yes, they visited three universes. It's not quite as crazy as you're making it out to be. Um, but yeah, that's my two-piece. Uh, and then the first uh, Harry Potter movie, The Sorcerer's Stone, this very much feels like a kid's movie, and funny enough, it's directed by Christopher Columbus, the guy who directed the first two Home Alone movies. Uh, and this very much feels like that kind of um, tone and stuff like that. Like, this is a very light-hearted movie. It's one of my girlfriend's favorite movies um and i mean like think about what christopher columbus had to do he had to that's his day i know the name of the explorer but that's the name of the director as well um but he had to like set the visuals for the next seven or so movies um after this one like everything is kind of derived from this movie um visual wise and um you know costume wise and stuff like that um it really sets a good tone for the series. Um, I would put this right here. It's a good movie. It's a good, solid, decent franchise movie. Then we have Wakanda Forever. And this surprised me a lot. I like this better than the first uh, Black Panther movie, surprisingly. Uh, it's like, you know, when the movie doesn't need to focus on the main superhero then it can also do some world building. This Marvel movie actually has some pretty good world building. Not quite a par with the first Avatar, but still quite good. Um, and 
action screen. Of course, you have the generic third act stuff, but that's with every Marvel movie. There's nothing I could... All I could do is just keep complaining about it, but it's never going to change, so whatever. Um, but yeah, if you want to hear more extensive thoughts on what I thought about this movie, check out the Black Hudson channel. Me and Peter did a review on this movie, and um, they'll... Uh, those are my thoughts over there. But uh, I would put it like right below Avatar, I think. That's fair. Uh, Hocus Pocus, uh, this one is below average-ish. Um, let's do top of below. Uh, it's just a kid's movie, you know, like a generic Disney kid's movie. My girlfriend loves this movie. She loves, like, Disney Channel movies, so... Yeah. Um, and we have Goodfellas. Goodfellas. Uh, this is nearly a perfect movie. And yes, I'm going to put it just below Perfect Blue. Perfect Blue is like, no, you know what? It's better than Perfect Blue. <laughs> it is, it is. Um, but Goodfellas, god damn. Uh, this movie is just fan fucking fantastic in every single way possible um I, it's just a perfect you know scorsese knows how to pace his movies very well he knows how to do movie openings for sure um he knows how to tell a story uh how to write about capelli characters and the camera work in this is still fucking legendary till this day and the movie came out in like uh the early 90s you know it's just anytime you put it on you can stop it at any point and you're gonna want to watch the whole fucking thing it's just that fucking good uh good fellas mark scorsese's best then we have lila crocodile this shit was not for me uh, i was on a double date with someone you know who you are and he forced us to watch this again you know who you are i fell asleep during the movie um but it was in comfy chairs so there's that then we have incantation uh these are one of these TikTok movies where it's like, oh, you will shit your pants when you see this movie. It's fine. Uh, it's a, I believe it's a Japanese or Chinese horror movie. Uh, it's just a kind of generic, you know, oh, possession. Oh, we found an ancient tomb cult member thing. It doesn't really, like, change the grade. But if you like those movies, then good for you, I guess. Um, I would put it... Yeah, it's, it's just kind of decent. All right, then we have Glass Onion. Um, this is the second Knives Out movie. Uh, I thought it was quite good. I don't think it's as good as the first one, um, and I stand by that. Uh, I like kind of the joke part at the end uh, where they reveal, you know, the whole mystery behind the thing. Um, but it, it it's, I mean, again, I just want to see more of these movies, you know, like... Um, actually be, be released in theaters because this like movie was initially released in a couple of theaters not a bunch of theaters uh, because I thought it wasn't going to do well it went number one in all those theaters and I went to Netflix and it's now like the num like the sixth most viewed Netflix movie they have on there so like people will watch original IPs as long as they're good and marketing marketed very well um, but yeah uh, so Glass Onion, where would I put it? Uh, honestly, yeah, it's very enjoyable. There, um, it's not too far below of Knives Out, and it's a little bit more enjoyable than Avatar. Um, but that could be like a first viewing type of thing. You know, if you go and rewatch this, um, you maybe might not enjoy it as much. I saw that like when I watched Knives Out again, I still enjoyed it, even though I knew what happened at the end. But it was fun seeing like the foreshadowing and stuff like that um with glass onion who knows um what it'll be like on rewatches and then we have logan this is one of my favorite superhero movies of all fucking time uh i would put it oh yeah right there right there logan is a must watch it's such a unique um superhero movie um you know, it's very small scale. Last superhero movies now is like it's gonna change. Like if we don't do this, it's gonna change the world and stuff like that. Only a couple uh, movies 
even Marvel does it too. Marvel does it too. I'll give credit where credit's due. Like Wakanda Forever wasn't like, oh, the world's going to be destroyed if this didn't happen. It was more like a small scale, like these war nation, warring nations are going up against each other. Uh, but Logan, and I watched this one in the black and white version, and it's perfect. Like, Logan is like, if you mix a Western with the superhero genre, um, it's fantastic. The All the performances are great. Truly, truly Oscar worthy. But of course, it's a superhero movie, so. Uh, um, but yeah, no, Logan was fan fucking tastic. It is fan fucking tastic, even on like multiple rewatches. Uh, then I saw the first Deadpool. Uh, I remember really liking this high, in high school, and I've rewatched it a couple times. Uh, it is, it's good. I like it. Um, you know, Deadpool has never been my favorite character just because he's like really quippy, and I kind of find that annoying sometimes. Um, but you know, for the time that it came out, you know, we thought that Deadpool would never come out, and it revitalized Ryan Reynolds' career. Um, because he cares about the character so much and plays him so well. Um, but yeah, it's just a, like a fun little small scale superhero movie, um, low budget, and it's it's great. It's good. All right. Uh, <laughs> the night before Christmas, not for me. This is another girlfriend watch. <laughs> uh, then we have Elvis. Um, I think Elvis was quite decent. Um, a little too long. A little too long. Uh, it kind of forgettable. Like, I, I don't really remember much about this movie. Um, there are other movies here that I saw before I saw Elvis. Like, The Northman and stuff like that came out before Elvis. But, like, for the life of me, I, like, the first, like... I believe, like, 45 minutes to an hour is just, like, super fast-paced, like, breakneck speed. Like, we gotta get to when he's famous. Uh, like, if you want to see an excellently pasted, like, music autobiography film, Walk the Line is, is like, my perfect... That's the best autobiography film ever. That's, like, top tier right there. Um, and Elvis was just kind of... Eh, it was decent. Like, I wouldn't necessarily... Maybe I'd see it again, but I'm not, like, gunning to, like rewatch um but yeah it, it was fine you know then we have are you ready for the dc hierarchy to change as in <laughs> dwayne the rock johnson is no longer in it uh so there's been a lot of controversy so going from like talking about dc and stuff like that and like what james gunn's plans are and stuff like that and um what the rock's plan was for changing the dc hierarchy and how it was a box office failure but um <laughs> the, the Dwayne leaked his fucking um, the the fucking film's finances and stuff just to prove that it did make a profit, but he only proved further that it didn't. Uh, I didn't even finish this film. I'll be honest. Um, it's uh, this one's offensive. That's the only reason why it's above <laughs> Black Adam. Black Adam just uh, so bad and very cheap too. Uh, I I can't stand it. It it's like. It very much feels like one of those early 2000s movies. You know what I mean? Like early 2000s superhero movies. Um, where it's just like, look at this anti hero. He's edgy. And like the way The Rock Johnson really tried to push it, like, oh, you never seen an anti hero superhero before. And it's like, yes, there have been several. <laughs> have you not been Have you not been keeping track of superhero movies? It's quite a common theme. Um, but yeah, no. And then we have the remake of Pinocchio. Oof. Yeah, this one's bad. I didn't even get through it. Um, I wanted to put it on just because I know my girlfriend likes the Disney remake stuff or whatever. And I remember even she was like, I don't want to watch this. Turn this off. So we turned it off. Um, yeah, no, it's just... There's nothing remarkable to say about it. It's just meh. Uh, Matilda, I'm not really into musicals. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily put it under trash. I guess I enjoyed it more than that. Yeah, I mean, it's full of average. I'm never going to watch it again. Uh, I think the original Matilda movie has a lot more character and stuff like that. Um, but, I mean, it, you know, it's it's whatever. It's, you know, if you like musicals, you've probably already watched it. Uh, Werewolf by Night. Uh, I'm going to put this decent, uh, maybe like right below. 
Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Marvel's trying to do something different. Um, and it is different in some ways, but it's mostly kind of the same shit. Um, uh, it's just like, ooh, Marvel's now doing a horror movie. Look, there's blood in this one. It's like, alright. Still kind of just decent. Although I like Man-Thing. Man-Thing was cool seeing him there. But, yeah, that's about it. Uh, Milestone Generation. This is a documentary about Milestone, the combo company that gave us, uh, Static Shock and, uh, Icon. Um, it's like a, uh, black-owned, um, comic book publisher at the time, and it, um was unique for its time especially during the 90s and stuff because like these black creators felt like you know their race wasn't betrayed very well in comic books that like they were always like secondary characters so they decided to publish comic books where like the superheroes were black and they were part of like neighborhoods and stuff like that um and they could commentate about um society from their point of view uh, and then eventually DC partnered up with them uh, when Milestone started to fail. Um, and now it's having kind of a rebranding right now. Uh, but yeah, this documentary goes all over all of that. And it, it was really interesting to see like um, these guys' thought process of like um, breaking into a pretty much white uh, industry. Um, so yeah, I would put it probably on top of decent. You know, if you don't care about comic book stuff... Um, Yeah, if you don't care about comic and stuff, then you, you probably won't give a shit about this. But, like, for someone who does care about it, it was a decent watch. It, it was great. Uh, then we have the first X-Men movie, Holy Dated Batman. I mean, you know, Hugh Jackman uh, portrays a good Wolverine. A good movie Wolverine. He's not really comic book accurate Wolverine. Uh, but, yeah, no, this movie's pretty dated. It's, some of the dialogue is terrible. Like when uh storm is fighting toad and then she says do you want to know what happens to thunder and then she goes the same thing that happens to everything else and then <laughs> she she just electrocutes toad it's like wow that, that was great dialogue 10 out of 10 um but yeah i mean it's an a standard it's a solid good superhero movie um it did a lot for the superhero genre. And, yeah. It's good. Uh, then we have Pearl, a.k.a. the prequel to X, which I enjoyed uh, more than X. Uh, I will put this. Honestly, honestly. Ooh, yeah. Mm. No. Ooh, this is tough. Ooh, this is really tough, actually. Hmm. I think, yeah, because I've rewatched the Batman a bunch of times. Um, but Pearl is unnerving. It's like, I, I would say watch Pearl first before you watch X, because X really spoils a lot of stuff from Pearl. Uh, so watch Pearl first. That's how I did it. And it is just... The directing is fantastic. The performances are great. You're just following the main lead. And she's just giving it her all. There's this, like, uh, end credit scene where you just see her crying. And, like, it's literally as the credits are rolling, she's just crying. And it's, like, the most unnerving shit I've ever... I've actu I actually... This, this was a horror movie that genuinely, like, when I got home while driving, was unnerving the shit out of me. Um, this... The, the director, he's a new guy in town, but he's doing a fucking fantastic job with these movies. Uh, he's doing a third la one that will complete this trilogy called Maxine, and I can't fucking... I'm first in line to see that movie. Uh, Pearl was fantastic, and uh, even Mars Scorsese saw it and liked it, so... You know, if the man said he liked it, he liked it. <laughs> then we have Buzz Lightyear. Uh, this is unnecessary garbage, um... It's just, and I'm not saying that because, oh, you do it unless we get Like, I don't care about any of that stuff. And I just find it funny when Ben Shapiro has a fucking heart attack over that stuff. Like, he's just, he's such a fucking idiot. But it was just kind of boring. And, like, even my girlfriend was just like, yeah, I like, I just don't, I don't see the point in making this. Like, there was no point. Um, 
and it's not because of a liberal agenda or whatever. It's just because genuinely, like, what was what was the point? Like, Pixar has always said, what is the point of telling a story? You know, before they even launch something, uh, they're like, all right, but what's the story we want to tell? And this very much felt in the opposite of like what Pixar usually um, strives for with that kind of statement. Um, so yeah. All right, we're we're getting through this pretty quickly. We're almost done. We're almost there. Wow, I watched a lot of movies, huh? Jesus Christ, I need to go to life. All right, then we have. I believe this is film Z of One Piece. Um, this was decent. I liked it. Um, I don't really remember much of it, uh, so maybe it should go down for that. Uh, no, it shouldn't. Uh, One Piece film red. <laughs> One Piece. Uh, this was quite a good movie. Mm -hmm. You know what? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna rate this pretty high. We're gonna rate this right there. Uh, it's a musical. <laughs> Heads up. Uh, but it is one of the better One Piece films. Uh, the animation's great. The storytelling's really good. The soundtrack is fucking bumping. Um, so... Yeah, uh, go see it for yourself. Um, if you're a One Piece fan, if you're not, I guess skip this one out. Uh, Casino Royale, okay, Daniel Craig's debut as James Bond. Uh, this is absolutely a must watch. Um, I'll put it right there. Uh, this is my favorite Bond film. Um, it's just the plot, the pacing, uh, the action is just so so well done definitely above skyfall um it's just one of those again where you just if it's on randomly in the day you just put it on you know um because it's just that fun and engaging uh yeah then we have fight club um fight club still holds up it's a great movie um david finch is still very very good at directing um and that plot twist is still one of the greatest in movie history um it's just the foreshadowing too where you see tyler just flashing in frames in the background and stuff like that um you know and a great fucking soundtrack like early 2000s like new metal like fuck yeah <laughs> it's it's just so cool and fun um but yeah which the oh this is Guardians holiday special uh yeah it's decent it's fine uh laughs here and there it's cute it's a cute movie um and it kind of progresses uh, the story a little bit um it's just kind of like a fun bonus thing which I think that's all it was meant to be so I can't judge it too harshly then we have Prey aka the new Predator movie I never thought we would see a new predator movie let alone alien movie who knows when we're gonna see something like that from this franchise but like uh from what i understand prey was in development while disney bought out fox uh so they're like uh do we release it do we just shelf it what do we do with it um so they're like fuck it just put it on hulu and it was awesome i loved kind of like the time period it was setting i just want predator movies to be like this from now on where you just drop a predator in a random time period next what i want to see is like uh hudo or um japan with the samurai like the samurai era that would be awesome uh you know um just you could do so much with the predator character in different time periods just do that don't make it a continuous story we don't need any of that shit don't make a super predator or whatever the fuck like with predator sequels they're just like oh what if we make the predator even more badass keep a same generic predator and just put them on planet earth on different time periods and have that and it's awesome and the main lead it was a lot of like i, I like social media and stuff there was a lot of like one of those typical like anti-sjw types that were just like oh, oh it's a fucking girl oh she has barely any training oh she's not even as good as her male counterparts how the fuck could she take down a predator and it's like she she tried the whole movie to take down the predator and she still fucked up and failed it's not like she was a mary sue or whatever she was like struggling just like everyone else like what the fuck are you guys talking about um but all that aside great character great time period to set it in awesome effects uh the cgi bear was a little eh, but um 
mostly excellent, enjoyable, enjoyable ride. I would definitely watch it again. Um, I enjoyed this movie quite a bit. Yes. Then we have the original 1990s Ninja Turtle movie. This movie is so fucking nostalgic for me. Um, I love the Jim Henson um, costumes. They look really good even today. Um, and it follows the comic book, the original comic book storyline pretty well, honestly. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's not afraid to be dark like the comic books, like the storyline, but also light, take the lightheartedness of the 1980s show. Um, it's just overall like a fantastic adaptation of that source material. Uh, I'm not blind though. Uh, obviously, this could be a lot of nostalgia talking, so I would just put it in good. I wouldn't necessarily put it in great. Um, uh, but I enjoy this film immensely. Like, this film is my childhood. Then we have Secret of the Ooze, which is also my childhood, but a noticeable set, um, a notable back step. Uh, it just kind of, it feels more kiddie. Like, uh, a lot of the times, if you notice, the Ninja Turtles don't even use their weapons half the time. You have the vanilla ice. Go, Ninja. Go, Ninja. Go. So really, it should be, like, below average, but my nostalgia is talking, so I'm going to put it decent because I will always rewatch that. Um, but yeah. Uh, when Harry met Sally, uh, this thing is... Uh, this thing is dated. It's dated like a month. There's one funny gag, and it's at the very beginning, but other than that, it's just uh, kind of kind of cringeworthy. Uh, then we have Turtles Forever, which was basically the series finale of the uh, 2003 Ninja Turtles, the Ninja Turtles I grew up with. So just hearing those voices again, those are the voices of my Ninja Turtles. I love them so much. Uh, I'm actually re-watching the... Uh, or starting to watch... I've rewatched the first season like a bunch of times, but I'm going to try to keep track with it. The uh, 2012 Ninja Turtles, which is actually very good. Um, but yeah, Turtles Forever is great. It's a mixture between the... Um, 2003 Ninja Turtles and the original 1980s um, Ninja Turtle cartoon and they collide together uh, unfortunately the 1981 Turtles don't have their original voice actors and they're kind of dumbed down from their original counterparts um, whereas the 2012 Ninja Turtles they have like the same kind of mashup but they actually still retain the original voice actors and stuff like that I think it was some licensing issue or whatever with the 20, uh, 2003 one um, but Regardless of all that, uh, it's a pretty entertaining, you know, it's, it's, it's on top of decent. <laughs> um, it's just, it's for turtle fans only. And then there's a surprise reveal of like the comic Ninja Turtles, them being edgy and stuff and appearing is great. Um, so now we are going to go into the God tier, uh, which is basically, but it doesn't necessarily mean. This is like the order I would put him in. All right. Okay. And the reason why they're mess matched up like that, because like must watch is like, oh my God, these films are great. God tier is like my personal opinion on, um, these and stuff like that like everything of course is my personal opinion but overall on my rewatchability and stuff like that like i could rewatch these five movies over and over the irishman it takes a lot out of you uh prisoners is kind of damp and depressing and like casino royale the ones below that just don't quite make it to the top five mark they're still great movies so you must watch it but god tier is safe for like if you haven't watched these movies yet what is your problem like you need to watch these immediately uh i feel like the underdog in this one is perfect blue i feel like not a lot of people have seen that it's one of the best not only animated films because animation can be cinema too um uh, but it's not only the best film but one of the best animated films i've ever seen um it's fantastic it's influenced Christopher Nolan's cinematographer, you can obviously tell um, that he's a big fan of, like, the uh, anime aesthetic and stuff like that, the cinematography. Um, but, yeah, like, yeah, those would be my top five of this year. Uh, everything, um, I'm kind of going out of order, but uh, everything, everywhere, all at once was great. I would definitely rewatch it. It's such a unique theatrical experience and was actually kind of, uh, the multiverse of madness, uh, almost like, you know, you have to 
go into more than three worlds in order to think about it as being crazy or whatever. Um, but generally a great movie about family and like family complications and stuff like that. Uh, and about cultures and stuff like that. It's great. Uh, 12 Angry Men, every single... If you are a film fan, you need to watch 12 Angry Men because it teaches you how to create tension with just dialogue. The whole movie is set into one room and you have all these characters that you have to mesh up and stuff like that and they all have to have separate interactions and like the cinematography is great. Um, a lot of like shots where it's just, you know, it keeps shooting and doesn't cut away. Um, it's just, it's so fucking good. Uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy will always be at the top of God tier for me. Uh, Lord of the Rings is one of my favorite franchise, favorite books, favorite anything. Uh, it's pretty much the perfect trilogy of all time. Um, I count it as one big thing because it's one big story. Uh, yeah, and Goodfellas, what's there to say about Goodfellas? It's fucking Mario Scorsese at his fucking best. Uh, I love Goodfellas. I will always watch it. I feel like watching it right now just talking about it um yeah so these are like the filmmaker 101 uh top five kind of stuff and uh yeah that's my list um thank you guys so much for watching tell me if i'm right tell me if i'm wrong uh let me know in the comments below and share this video um if you disagree with me tell me why you disagree with me in the comments below anyways thanks guys i'll catch you next time